facts only episode. Um, yes, sir. Talking about Nigerian female artists. Yes, sir. We've seen a couple. We've seen a lot of new a artists. Lot of them, a lot of a them. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is is the year you know bringing up the new generation? Is it heralding a new generation of female artists in Nigeria? Um, it looks like it. Yes, it looks like it. Um, shout out to We Talk Sound. They did something um, about a month ago where they placed like 10 female artists. Like when you look at it, the numbers are kind of staggering. Like you see a lot of names. You see Escort, who's a rapper based in Abuja. You see um, this girl that's currently signed to Aristocrat. Um, you see a girl like Sony. You see Doni. You see Tem, Arasta. You see Fave. You see a lot of talented girls, right? And they are doing, a lot of them are doing different things. They are not exactly the same. Like they have similarities. A lot of them have similarities, but they also have differences. Like they are, they are significantly different. Um, so the good thing about now is, remember three years ago or four or five years ago when we used to have a conversation about how there were not a lot of, we didn't have sufficient female artists in Nigeria. Like we had some, we had a lot of people who were trying to get on that level. Yeah. But at the top, we didn't really have a lot of them. But now it feels like we might see way more female, we might see an increased amount of female stars at the top. Maybe not A list. Maybe not A list. But we are going to see a lot on the B list. And that is an, an, an incredible improvement. It's a significant improvement on where we are coming from because it means that the market is readier. It means that women have more chances. It means that little girls can dream. It means that they can't. They, they won't just wake up and kill their own dreams because they know that they are never going to get a chance. It means that people can think about making money. It means that people can get their families out of dungeons. So it's a, it's opened it's opened a lot of possibilities. But they, again, back to these girls, right? They, they have similarities and they have differences. A lot of the vocalists, sort of, the, the voice that is sort of the same, especially the way they end, the end of words. Yeah. Like Arasta and Thames is already documented. Faith, for example, it sounds a little bit. The, the, the voice type is kind of interwoven. Uh, the, the reason for that, you can't really point, point to it yet. Maybe it's because that style of um, delivery is itself. Like, because of a Thames, for example, mm. maybe a lot of people are also doing it um, unintentionally. Remember Whiskey, right? Um, remember how everybody wanted to do EAE yeah, yeah, after yeah. Whiskey popped. Um, I, I also don't think a lot of these girls are intentionally doing it. I think a lot of them are just that similar. They are yeah. vocalists, right? It's not like they are copying that, but it, the way if a delivery is working, a style is working, it's not like that's the voice going on. But if a style is working, then that means they might want to emulate what is working because everybody likes what is working. So, aside from that, they are all, they are all very fierce. Like, if you look at them, avant-garde avant -garde style, avant-garde fashion, in terms of the branding, like, they are, they are fierce, they, are very, they look powerful. Like, you look at them... Maybe it's not just them just doing one thing. Maybe it's just the, 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 the market of the Of era. the market, yeah. You can, you can see that. Go back to the hotel era, right? You know how we say, hotel is dead, mm. right? Hotel is dead. But look at it. If it's a lifestyle, then the lifestyle doesn't belong to them anymore. Because the mainstream market, the mainstream artists have taken over, right? Cool culture was, like when you look back at what people used to call Alte. So Alte was basically cool kid culture, right? Like the aesthetics, the fashion, painting of nails, avant-garde has avant-garde appearances, free will being portrayed in how people were dressing, the kind of outfits, the kind of retro outfits, the reflection of old Nollywood, bandanas, big jeans, rumpled shirts, dirty sneakers, painted nails, eye eyeshadows, all these things is what some of these girls are doing now. Yeah, look at an, uh, an Ira Star, for example. Thames didn't look like that before. She was a very, very girl next door kind of brand, even though she was fiercely beautiful. But now you see the covers of the magazines she's doing, you see her Wonderland, the kind of pictures she's putting on her IG page. It's obvious that someone is switching that brand up. Like you see, you see, you see Duny, for example, you see Duny's hairstyle, it's a more basically, right? You see um, the girl that Ar Aristocrat just signed, she looks very fierce when you're looking at her. And they're also, a lot of them significantly, they're sensual. They know how to project sensuality and use their sexuality again. Thames wasn't doing that before. Sony is not doing that yet. But a person like S God, bruh, she's a rapper. 
but you can see the sensuality oozing out of her. You can see the sex appeal. So some of those things are very, they are, they are particular, they are peculiar some of the things they are doing. Now, but the good thing is that a lot of, most of those girls are doing different things. Duni is different from Ayasta. S God is different from Thames. Yeah. They are different, significant. They have similarities, yeah. but in the real sense of it, they are different. And the good thing is also that a lot of them are also very expansive. Thames produces, and she writes, Duni produces as well. She's a sound engineer. Them to sound engineer. So it's a fantastic time. So she kudos to some of these girls, man. She kudos to them. Why, why, why did it take, why was it so difficult to have this, like, this influx of like, <clears throat> new female artists for a long time? Man, we're a patriarchal society. We're a patriarchal society. As much as you don't want to talk about that, that's just what it comes down to. Because we're a patriarchal society and the girl is looked down upon, not intentionally, but significantly by practice. The girl is looked down upon and she's also placed on a higher moral pedestal. That's why in the old days, like in our generation when we we're coming up, a guy, it was hard for a guy to become an artist from a family. Because your parents always go to school. It was even harder for a girl to become an artist because parents naturally will feel like you're going to join bad gang. It's just what it is. And then the, the, the patriarchy also means that the, to succeed as a female artist, you need to have a high dose of sexuality and sexuality. You need a high dose of those things. Because sex sells and sex appeal sells. That's why Tiwa Savage came and crashed everything down. Because first thing she did was Kelly Kelly Love. You guys will hear. She was dancing and shaking everything. You guys know we noticed that because man, this is a beautiful woman. I was and the song was also, it also caught her attention. And then it got to love me. Where she had like the cleavage thingy. You could not but notice that. She crashed the glass ceiling. Guess what? The boys enjoy that, but they're also going to judge you for that. They are going to judge you for that. Not only will they judge you for that, they will also profile you. They are enjoying it though, but they will profile you for it. Even women will profile you for it. Because there's a high standard of morality. Everybody thinks there's only one way to be moral. So if you are doing this, then must mean you're a bad person. Must mean you're a bad girl. Some of those things. So all of these things then snowballed into the idea of how it became really hard for, fe for, for female artists to thrive. It was so hard because your personality, if you're a different type of person, you then have to become a different type of person to blow. That's why in the, two in the 2000s, some of our biggest female artists were rappers. They were rappers. The biggest female artist in Nigeria at some point was Sasha. She was a rapper. Before she was having Sire winning mamas and Yemi Alaji Sire winning mamas, it was Sasha. It was Sasha that was dominating some of those awards. I remember the first time Sasha won Best Female. Chanelu, Sasha won Best Female on the continent, right? So you look at it, 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 you look at some of those things and you understand how, who were the female pop stars at the time? Queen, Oman Omi, yes. But the era of Oman Omi also came into the era of talent shows and some of those things. But who, 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 who were the female pop stars? Like they were there, but they were not exactly at the, at the, at the top because to blow a female, to Coco and Uncle blow a female artist, you need to, because you need twice as much as, as much budget to blow a female artist. You're looking at um, fashion, you're looking at this, you're looking at videos, you're looking at the brand, you're looking at, you're looking at convincing. On top of that, like Don Jazzy was telling the booker, this one won't knock, this one won't knock, this one won't knock. All, everybody wants to have sex with her before they help her. So that snowballs into the idea of why female artists are blowing now. Because in the middle of the decade that we just passed, we had photo of feminism became more vocal on social media. And the social media was important, right? They, women started demanding things. They started demanding things. Like they became more vocal. They knew their rights and they were inspiring more young girls. Now it's not a coincidence that a lot of these girls that are blowing up, a lot of them are under 25. They're quite young, right? So you like. So the, the, there's also the Me Too and the Times of Conversation. You had a person like Jesse Reyes making a record called, um, called um, Gatekeeper, where she was accusing somebody um, who was detail. She, where she was talking about how detail was, want, wanted to sleep with her because she, before she could blow. So time, Me Too and, time, and Times of snowballed, a lot of things snowballed into the things that I've seen that women are enjoying now. Like, don't make any mistake. It is still quite hard for women out there. It is still quite hard, but guess what? Society, women now dream big. They want to be part of the conversation. And society is now more willing to do that. And guess, again, Gen Z dominates the country right now. In Africa currently, over 51% over of our population is, is under, 20, is under 20, 23. Nigeria is even younger. 
way younger. So that means that we have a lot of people with different ideals. That means we have a lot of kids who were born with different mentality entirely. They, are, they, they, were, they were born with seeing women in a different way. Make no mistake, the average Nigerian man is still patriarchal. He still sees women as, as subordinate to him. Like the average Nigerian boy somewhere still sees women as subordinate to him. But he's not exactly as patriarchal as maybe his father was. He still sees some opportunities. So, so the ways are opening up. It's not, so you, it, you might, we might criticize what feminists did on social media. We might say that it was excessive. But you can also not say that it didn't work in some ways. And some of those, it, it changed the mindset of a lot of men towards what it is. It changed the mindset of society. It changed the mindset of a lot of people. Women became more aspirational. They wanted to break out of their shell. And look where we are. It's, it's, it's working. Okay. Um, lastly, do their brands you know, have a tendency to be wine dimensional because of you know, the aesthetics and the sound that we just mentioned? Um, yes, the sound, the, the brands do have a tendency to be one dimensional. The brands are not exactly one dimensional, but guess what? What women have to do to succeed is there's a template. There's also a template for boys. You have to do something. That's why you, you see all, Niger all the boys painting their nails now. Everybody wants to be cool. Like all the boys started doing dress at some point. All the boys started wearing black outfits at some point. But the problem is, because um, society has way higher standards for women. Remember Yemi Aladdin back in, in the mid-2000s? People were criticizing her lyrics, right? Was, you were saying she was too hardly based. But guess what? Whiskey is saying, I want your body in my bed. But look me leaning on. You didn't have anything. You accepted that. So why are you not accepting that? So it's a, it's a, they can't escape that. They can't escape that conversation. Those brands will probably remain one dimensional. But the problem is you need to, to look at um, how women need to do better. You need to be able to let these women understand that that does not define who they are. It doesn't define it at all. They just have to keep going and they just have to keep winning. And that's facts only.